plasma. Plasma is everywhere. Did you know that? It's everywhere in space. And of course, we're in space right now too. Plasma consists of 90, no, <laughs> space consists of 99% plasma. Did you know that? What, what is plasma? Does anyone here, anyone here know? Anyone want to take a guess? What is plasma? And I'm not talking about the bloody stuff. That's like, uh, <laughs> Scary, anybody, what's plasma? The fourth state of matter. We have solids, liquids, gas, and plasma. Basically, you can think of it as electrified gas, which is really cool. Now, there's another bit of plasma that some of us have seen, and probably we've all seen pictures of it, and that's the aurora borealis. Isn't that pretty? Just gorgeous. Now, plasma actually comes in three different modes. We call the first one that we see in space dark mode. We call the second mode glow mode, which is the aurora borealis. And the third one is arc mode. Let me show you a picture of plasma in the arc mode. Yeah, that's right, it's our sun. For years, we've thought that the sun was a thermonuclear furnace or a bomb going off. And there are thermonuclear events that happened on the sun, but the more we learn and study the sun, the more we realize that the sun is actually an electrical discharge phenomenon. That was a lot of big words. It's just a big ball of plasma, which is really cool. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now, we've got the, oh, oh, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna start off with the science corner. That's cool. Uh, oh no, what happened to science corner? <laughs> okay, let's fix it. Everything good? Okay, good. Science hand, are you okay? Science corner kind of went a little crazy. Who's our special guest today? Oh, I'm excited. All right, our special, oh. <laughs> this is a cookie recipe. Yeah, don't worry, we'll get it. Okay, this one. Our special guest, oh, this is Martha's telephone number. We need a special guest for this week, thank you. This week's guest, oh, no way. It's Wallace Thornhill. Wallace Thornhill is the leading proponent of the plasma universe, also called the electric universe theory. He lives in Canberra, Australia, which is like, I'm sorry, it's, it's like eight hours behind us. I wonder if he's actually gonna talk to us. Science hand. Um, we're gonna talk to Wallace Thornhill today. Can you call him up and let's see if we can get him online? Uh -huh. Cool, d d hit it, d d d Skype it. We're gonna do Skype. Oh, there's the ring. Oh, my God. there he is. Wonderful, thank you so much for joining us today. I've got just a couple questions for you. Um, first mm -hmm. of all, can you tell us what got you interested in this whole electric universe plasma cosmology? Well, I think when I was very young, uh, one of my favorite books was How and Why It Works. And it had a picture of the Mount Palomar telescope on the front with cutaways showing how the mirrors were set and so on. <clears throat> also, I was intrigued by how you could plug a radio into a plug in the wall and sound would come out and years later when right. pictures would come out with television. Um, and so I used to borrow books and I used to read magazines, radio and hobbies. And by the time I got to uh, the end of primary school, I was building crystal sets for the local neighborhood kids. And then <laughs> by, by the time I finished high school, I was fixing television sets. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So you've been doing this whole sort of uh, plasma electronics thing your whole life. Yes, really. Um, I, I feel that this is why, why I'm here. <laughs> That's why I, I, for one, I'm just overjoyed that you're here. Uh, as you may know, the whole episode that we're doing today is on plasma, which is very mm -hmm. near and dear to both of our hearts. 
Um, let yes. me ask you this. What is the, the most surprising thing that you have discovered as you've progressed along the path of the electric universe theory? Well, I think um, when I first understood that the sun was not what we thought it was <laughs> and that stars shine electrically and not, uh, not entirely by nuclear energy. You know, when I, the first atomic bomb was dropped when I was three years old and, and we all began to understand the enormous energy in, wrapped up in atoms and atomic energy. And of course, it was natural that scientists would think that uh, stars to shine for billions of years must have a, an energy source which has to be atomic. And unfortunately, all of their efforts were uh, put into trying to uh, fit that model to what they saw. And uh, it wasn't until 1972 when a, a fellow an engineer from Flagstaff, Arizona, wrote an article saying, when you look at the sun, nothing that we see on the sun or above the sun matches the theory. And I thought, he's right. <laughs> and it was, that, it was that that got me interested in how stars shine. And uh, the work has continued all of these years, and it's only now that the whole complete picture of how you plug a star into the, the galaxy and how galaxies are wired together actually works. Oh, it, it's absolutely fascinating. Yeah, it was uh, the work of Ralph Jurgens, right? That you were talking That's about. Right, yes. Oh, we, we could just spend <clears throat> hours talking about all this, but I've just I've got one more question <laughs> for you. Um, what are you working on right now? Uh, working on right now are the fine details of how a star connects to its electrical circuit. And it's both uh, beautiful because you can actually see in space what's called planetary nebulae. Yes. And th there's one of them which is just gorgeous. We see it side on. It's called M2-9 if you want to have a look at it. And there the circuit is lit up. And so uh, Don Scott... Professor Don Scott and I have been looking at that in detail, trying to figure out exactly where the wires are, you know, how it's connected. Yes. Oh, it is, again, we could spend hours and hours, and you and I have, as you know, have just done a lot of talking. But thank you so much for joining me on my show today, and I will talk to you mm. a little later this week. Have a good night. Oh, good. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thanks for Thanks, the opportunity. Paul. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Guys. How cool was that? It's not every day that you get to talk to a world-class physicist who's on the cutting edge of science. And that's who that was. That was Wallace Thornhill. There's a little bit of a story behind it. I have been following his work for a long time and I just shot him off an email, never expecting that I would get a response. All I said was, hey, I really like your work, bravo. And he wrote back. He wrote back this like multi-paragraph email talking about his work, talking about me and what I was doing, and I was just blown away. So excited. I'm going to post a lot of these links that you heard him and I talk about, the, the work of Professor Donald Scott, the work of, work of Ralph Jurgens, and the whole Electric Universe model so you can learn about a little more. Now, let's come back down to this time and this place and play with the next thing of plasma, a Tesla coil. Now I've got a fun little video of the things that you can do with a Tesla coil. Martha, can you hit that, uh, that button for the Tesla coil video? Yes. Thanks, Whoa. Martha. What does this button do? No, wait, no, no, that's not, oh, no, that's not. Uh, Martha, I, I'm sorry, sweetie. Uh, Martha's just helping out today for the first time. Hit the other button. We need the other lights to come up. Not that one. It, oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> Thanks. It's, it's her first time up in the tech booth. <laughs> Martha is helping out because she wants to learn. She wants to grow. And you guys, you guys aren't even in school anymore, are you? No, you're out for summer. Well, Martha got sick of sitting home knitting, and so she asked me if she could come out and help today. So it, it, we're, we're gonna just give Martha a hand. Thank you, dear, I love you. Now, guys, check this out. I don't know if you can see this. This is a little behind the scenes of what's gonna go on here. Right in the middle of the stage 
is that little trap door that I just opened. And un in the trap door is our power. So I'm going to plug in. Most people never get to see the behind the scenes stuff in, in shows like this. And I wanted to show you that because it is power. And if I plug it in, and if everything goes right, we should have lights on. And we do. Cool. This, of course, is a Tesla coil. Can you guys see that all right, Ken? We, we good with that? JP, we're good. Camera, everybody in the audience, can you see that at home? Yes. Good. Oh, Alaska, can you see that right? Good. Tennessee, good. All right, yay. Tesla coil is simply two coils of wire. Now, the cool thing about it is these two coils of wire have electricity going through them, but they don't touch each other, which is really interesting. The first coil of wire is this big, red, thick one that you, you can see right here. I don't know if the camera can zoom in. Oh, yes, we can. You can see that right there. This wire is not connected to all of these little wires right here. It's connected magnetically and through the electric field. Well, what does that mean? Just, let's just keep it simple and just say that they don't touch. Even though they're not touching, they're not connected, they're still able to produce electricity like this. Now, of course, that shouldn't happen anytime. You should never have a light bulb that uh, can turn on without it being screwed into something. As you can see, it's not screwed in at all. Now, at the top of this Tesla coil is the end of the little tiny wire. Now, this is going to be really hard to see, but don't worry because we're going to make it a lot better. If I get my finger close to this, you can see, ah, okay, that, that's really hot, woo, <laughs> and, and, and very, very uh, slightly painful, and ooh, that smells, science hand, <laughs> it, smell that. Yeah, it, it, that's burning flesh, it, it really is. <laughs> now, even though that's burning flesh, and, and it, it's not really anything that's, that's dangerous, the little spark that is generated at the top of the Tesla coil is plasma. Now. Some of you are complaining, well, I can't see that science guy exactly, which is why I brought a bunch of experiments that it's going to have plasma that you can see. But this one is just cool. In fact, it's not just cool. Everybody say it with me. It's, it's science. science. You know, that reminds me of the time I won my very first cage match. Spark science. All right. So it's time to show you some plasma that you can actually see. Now, some of you may have remembered uh, seeing this on the last episode that we did. How many of you remember seeing this? You remember where it was? Where was it? On the side of the stage. Yeah. It was right down here sitting on the floor and we had a spark that was generated, came up to the top and burned the thread and it was a part of our, does anyone remember the name of that machine? Anyone? Yes, go ahead. Rube Goldberg. Yeah, the Rube Goldberg device, exactly right. This is the Jacob's Ladder that was a part of the Rube Goldberg device and now we're going to use it again and explain it instead of just having it set up off stage where you can barely see it. So. The Jacob's Ladder is composed of a couple different elements. The first element is the two rods that I brought out here before. Now, these are anything but fancy. They are literally <laughs> just a piece of metal that I've stuck into a block of wood. Uh, and just for fun, this is an actual two by four, uh, meaning that it's actually two inches by four inches. This is back before they stopped making two by fours two inches by four inches. But I've stuck a couple rods in there. Now, this big boy right here is a transformer. Specifically, it's a neon sign transformer. What it does is it takes the electricity that I'm going to plug in right now, and it steps it up. Does anyone know what stepping up means? Yeah, he's, he's, he's doing this with his hands. It literally means that. It means you're taking the amount of electricity and going from a low amount to a high amount, which is really cool. Right now, the electricity going into this is 120 volts. Everybody say that with me, 120 volts. 120 volts. Good. And it steps it up to 12,000 volts. Is that a lot? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's, that's a lot. So we're going to be a little bit careful with this 
Now, the kind of the cool thing about it is voltage is not what kills you. It's not even what hurts you. Well, okay, it, it, it does hurt you a little bit. But what actually is dangerous with electricity is amperage. Everybody say amperage. amperage. Good. Amperage is the amount of electricity that comes into you. The amount of electricity that's being pumped through this is very, very small. It's only like 0.1 milliamps, and that's nowhere near enough to cause any damage. But the voltage is enough to make you go <laughs> So we're not gonna do that. Uh, I've, I've asked uh, some of my uh, students to, if they wanted to lick it, and uh, a couple of them got their tongues out, and I didn't let them lick it, so no worries. Uh, science Hand, hi. We are ready to have you start up the Jacob's Ladder. If you will hit the switch. Uh, uh, that, was, that was a euphemism. I mean, turn it on. Oh. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, what happened? Oh, Martha! <laughs> uh, start pushing buttons, sweetie. Something. Uh, it's not. Yeah, yeah, not. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, try that one. Nope, not that one. Uh, try, okay, science hand, try it again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, remember, you from. There we go. This is a Jacob's Ladder. And what you're seeing right here, of course, is electricity in the arc mode. You remember how I took, what just happened? It, was that you? Uh, Martha, was that you? Uh, okay, okay, hold on. Oh. <laughs> the way the Jacob's Ladder works is that the two rods have to be very close to each other at the base, but not touching. If they touch, then things go awry. So we're not gonna make them touch. But if they're just suspended apart from each other, the electricity builds up, builds up, builds up to the point to where the plasma is created in arc mode. Now, one thing that's really cool about this and what's really fun is you can demonstrate that fire, like birthday candle cake fire, is actually a plasma. How many of you guys have ever seen birthday candles and Jacob's Ladders mixed together. A couple of, yeah, they're my kids. Let me show the rest of you what we can do here. Right back here, inside this container is a pig. Now I'm about to reveal something that has nothing to do with plasma, but it has everything to do with watching these episodes. Some of you know, and some of you are about to find out, that I have these little pigs hidden all over the stage in every episode. There's about five pigs per episode, with the exception of last episode. I think we only had two on stage. Oh, it was just one. Thank you, William. But every single episode, you will find that there are at least five of these little guys hidden everywhere on the stage. So watch out for them. But that's not what I wanted to show you. This is what I wanted to show you. A birthday candle. We're going to take that, and we're going to light it on fire and put it next to the Jacob Ladder. Science hand, can you turn off the Jacob Ladder for just a moment, please? Thank you very much. I'm gonna separate these. I'm gonna add the fire to it. I'm gonna melt the bottom of the candle to make it stand up like that because we want the fire to be high enough to meet the spark of the Jacob's Ladder. Now, here's what's gonna happen. Now, people at home, you can't see this, but you guys here in the studio audience can see this. All the boys in the room, stand up, please. Okay? Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, two, uh, 47. Good. And you can all sit down. All the women, stand up. All the ladies, the girls, the females. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, 12 of you. Okay, great. Right now, you're all seated, mixed up. Poof! You are now plasma. And very much like plasma, there are elements of plasma that are both positive and negative, or in the case of our little demonstration, male and female. I'm gonna light this candle, and we're going to create a cloud of plasma, and just like you guys right here, this cloud of plasma has positive and negative parts. It has two different elements. This rod right here, when we turn it on, is going to be charged negatively. It's gonna create a negative field around it. This rod is going to create a what? A positive field, exactly right. Which means that if this is right, 
if the candle flame really is made of positive and negative elements meshed together, it should mean that all the negative elements will be attracted to this side, to the positive side, and vice versa. Let's see if that happens. Okay, Science Hand, you ready? Uh -huh. What I want you guys to watch, focus on, and let's get the cameras pulled in really tight on that flame right there. Watch what happens to the flame when we turn it on. Three, two, oh, I'm breathing on it. Let me reset. Three, two, one. <laughs> Remember, it's, oh, there it goes, there it goes. And, uh, and turn it back off and back on. Ah, can you guys see that? Can you guys see it? Alaska, can you see that from where you're at? Good, can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay, what's the flame doing? Yeah, it's called a butterfly effect. Okay, back on, good, and then off, and on, and off. Now, firemen put out fires. But here's the interesting thing. Firemen could literally roll up to your house, which is on fire, stick a huge metal pole on one side of your house and a huge metal pole in the ground on the other side of the house and charge them up electrically and literally rip the fire in half. Why don't we do that? Because if we get it wrong, we set your house back on fire again. <laughs> that would be terrible. But remember, it's science. You know, that reminds me of the very first time I made a whole movie. Spark science. All right, we're not quite done. I've got one more thing for you. And that thing is we're going to mesh everything that we've just done today all together. Science hand. Oh, yes, thank you. You read my mind. Can you pull down the plasma ball too? Wait! No! Science hand, look. Okay, put it down. I want everybody to see this. Can we bring, Martha, can you bring the house lights down just a, a little bit again? Because I want everyone to see what's going on inside the plasma ball. Do you remember at the first of the episode how I talked about the Aurora Borealis and we saw the picture of it? You remember that? The Aurora Borealis, I said, was plasma in glow mode. Well, the plasma ball is also plasma in glow mode. But here's something just really interesting that Wallace Thornhill taught me just a couple months ago. Electricity, as it flows in space, flows just like wires in your house. Everybody knows that you, when you turn on a light, it's the electricity traveling through the copper wires in your house that makes your light go on, right? Well, the Aurora Borealis also has big, long chains, or not chains, but big, long conduits of power. Those are called Birkeland currents. Everybody say Birkeland current. Birkeland. Oh, say it like you mean it. Birkeland yeah, Birkeland current. Now, here's the cool thing, and here's how it ties in with a plasma ball. I, hopefully we can see this. This is where we need a really tight shot of the plasma ball. Birkeland currents are actually twisted pairs of electricity. And if you look very carefully in the plasma ball, you'll notice that the very ends of these are actually twisted pairs of electricity. Can you see that? Oh, there's a couple of them. It's really hard to see with the lights on. So if you have one of these at home, please go check it out and you can see twisted filament pairs of electricity. This is how electricity travels in space. Okay, science hand, can you pull that down out of the way? Oh, whoa, gentle, gentle science hand. Thank you. Okay, the last thing is this. Now, I'm guessing that most of you have a home and in your home is a kitchen and in the kitchen is a microwave. How many of you have a microwave? Raise your hand. What do you provide to everybody? Good, That's, that'll be wonderful. This is really fun. So you're gonna take your microwave. Now, please, as with many science things that we do here, have your parents' permission and or have them sitting right there with you because it's really cool and they're gonna wanna see it. So we got the microwave. The next thing you'll need is a big jar. Now, I want you to notice that this jar is just barely big enough to fit in our microwave. You don't want it any bigger than that because if you can't get in the microwave, then this is not going to work. The last thing you're gonna need is a candle. 
Now I'm choosing to use a tea light because it fits nicely and you'll see why here in just a second. I'm gonna take out the rotating tray. Science hand. Hi. Hi. Oh, <laughs> he's already, can you see that? We're gonna use some toothpicks. Now you've probably seen some uh, YouTube videos that show making plasma in a microwave and it shows taking a grape and cutting it in half. Does that work? Yeah, but not too well. I've actually done this experiment quite a uh, number of times and I found that the best way to make it work is with a toothpick and a candle. Uh, let's see, where's my lighter? Science hand, get my lighter. Uh-oh, uh where's my lighter? Oh, hey, science hand, I found my lighter. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna hand that to you and you are going to light the candle on fire, okay? Good, and it's on. Now, I put the jar over the top of it, set the whole thing in the microwave. Watch, guys. Oh, 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 is it gonna work? Oh, come on, come on, oh, it's trying, it's trying, it's trying real hard, it's trying. I think we need more flame, science hand. But we're gonna do a reset. Now, the more often you do this, the more this glass container is going to get hot because of course it's in a microwave and you're powering it up. So, since this is just the first time, the glass container is not very hot at all. In fact, it's not hot in the slightest. Uh, we need another toothpick, please, science hand. All right, here we go. Round two. Does science work the first time you try it? Yeah, yeah, yeah we already know that, duh. Okay, science hand, go ahead, light it up. Yep, oh, here, let me bring that a little bit closer to you. And down, and... Ah, there we go, got it. And in, and start, watch. Plasma in the microwave, tell me that's not cool. Come on baby, do it again, do it again. Oh. <laughs> there it is. Guys, this is really cool. As with everything, be careful, but please have fun. And remember, it's science. You know, that reminds me of the time I made my very first peanut butter and banana sandwich. Spark science. Science does not have all the answers which is really cool for all of us because it means that we have a lot more things to explore. The last thing I wanna show you today is this. This is my favorite shirt. This is my Electric Universe shirt and you'll notice that there's this really funky looking shape on it. This is actually the shape of a plasma discharge that Dr. Anthony Peratt has created in a laboratory. You've seen the shape of the plasma in our own little microwave, how it's just kind of like a cloud and crazy. But if you control it, you can make really cool shapes. Now, one of the reasons we know that the universe is plasma and that we live in an electric universe is because these type of plasma shapes have appeared in the sky. Wait, what? How do we know that? Let me show you. I'm gonna gently take off my mic and move it right here because I need to show you the back of my shirt. Watch this, guys. Notice how the shapes on the back of my shirt look very, very familiar to the shape on the front of my shirt? This is a plasma discharge in a laboratory and these are what ancient people carved in rock all over planet Earth. They were able to do that because there were giant plasma discharges in the sky seen by ancient peoples all over planet Earth. Do we have a lot more to learn? We do. Now it's your turn. Ready? Go. See you next week. Science hand. We dance now. Oh, with fire. Oh, that's, uh, that's great. Science hand. Yeah.
Everybody dance. Come on. Let's all dance. All the Kiwis coming out to dance. It's okay. You can dance. Don't be nervous. Yeah. Come on. Dance, everybody.